Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Trolls and Princesses. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and today I'll be showing you almost half of the game. Now, before we go into that, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and gain access to a wide variety of exclusive perks, then please go to patreon.com slash Games. There you can gain access to things like my opinions episodes, where I go in-depth about all the things I like and don't like about the games that I'm playing recently. You can also watch some videos early and advertisement free and gain access to an exclusive podcast feed where you can hear audio versions of all of the vlogs that I make as well as those opinions episodes. Now, the final thing I'd like to ask is if while you're watching this video, some part of the game really jumps out to you as interesting, then please comment about that down below because I'd love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I show you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. I also want to point out that today I'm filming with a prototype version of the game. That means the art and components that you see here might not match those in the final version. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. In it, each player is in control of a troll clan, and out here we have the mountain where all of us trolls live, and then various villages where humans are living their lives. Now, we are not evil trolls, we just want to build out luxurious caverns, we also want to play some tricks to have fun with the humans, and that may involve kidnapping some of them and putting them into our caves. Now, the way the game works is over a series of rounds, each player is going to take turns where they are going to move two of their trolls. Now, these trolls are going to move to a location either within that player's area or out here on the main board and then do actions out there depending on the number of trolls that player already has there, as well as depending on if the troll king happens to be there, they help things out. The actions available to us involve being able to build out our caves, placing these tiles out over to the left of our areas. In addition to that, we can mine various resources from our cave system, and we can harness troll power, which is one of the things that we need in order to play tricks on the humans out here. Now, when we head out here, we can destroy and cart back these pesky church bells. Trolls hate the sound of these. And in addition to that, we can build our own outposts out here. We can also bring these humans back to actually help us do various actions within our caves for the rest of the game. And we can also swap human children with troll changelings. And when we do that, we will actually upgrade the action options that we have in front of us. Now, whenever we take things from the board, we're going to place them down into our cave system. And wherever we place those, we'll get extra benefits. So this game is all about trying to increase our potency for our actions. In addition to getting more action points, we'll also build out the caves, which will just give us points by themselves. And this game is called Trolls and Princesses. So one of the things we will do is kidnap princesses and put them into luxurious rooms that we decorate within our caves. Once a certain number of rounds are over, the game will end and we'll score points based off of all of the various things that I've already described, and the player with the most points will be the winner. Now, this has been a brief overview, and don't worry, I'll explain how all of these things work in detail while we play, including a couple of things I haven't even touched on just yet. For now, though, I think it's time to start playing the game, and for today's tutorial, we are going to play as the red player here. Now, we are going to be the starting player, so now we can begin the first turn of the game. So let's focus over here on our player area. Now, as you can see, every player has a deck of cards that we got during setup. And in fact, we were able to draw the top card from this deck and look at it in secret while we were finishing the setup of the game. So this is the card that we have. And the first thing that we do on our turn is reveal this card and do what it says. With that in mind, let's focus out here on the village board. As you can see, this card shows a Roman numeral 2 at the top, and then it shows a human in the middle. Now, this might have humans, changelings, princesses, or nothing there. And what this says is we're going to add a human to village number 2. And there's always a number of villages equal to the player count. The villages have numbers. We have 1, 2, and then 4 down here. And so what that means is we have to add one human to the farming area of village 2. There's already a human there, so we can add a second one. And then the second thing that this card does is it dictates where the troll king is going to be for our entire turn. Now, that could either be a village out here, or it could be a section of our own player area. And in this case, the troll king is going to visit the left part of our player board, which is our resource area. The troll king is right here, so we can place them onto that part of our board. 
and then place them down here. Once again, as you can see, this matches our player board and there are three dominant areas on the board itself. This is our mining cavern, that is our building cavern, and this is our troll power cavern. We also have a cave network that we're going to be building out over to the left, but for now, the Troll King is just going to hang out in our mining cavern for this entire turn, and now we don't need this card anymore, and we can proceed with the actions on our turn. Now, the way this works is we are going to perform two activations, and with each of these, we're going to take one of our trolls and place them down onto a cauldron, and then we'll perform actions in the area where that cauldron is. As you can see, the three caverns on our player board all have cauldrons on them, and each village also has their own set of cauldrons. So we have to take one of our trolls and place them down onto a single cauldron. And I do want to point out that each player has five of these trolls. Now for the first five activations that we do, we're going to place a troll out. But from that point on, we are going to move trolls for the rest of the game. So we'll take one from somewhere and move them somewhere else. And you'll see that later on in the tutorial. Again, for the first five activations, we'll be placing a troll from the side. And for this one, I think we want to place it into our mining cavern. And once again, that's the bottom left part of our player board. So we're going to put the troll on a cauldron. And again, we could not do this if all of the cauldrons were already full. You can actually occupy a cauldron out on the village boards if they're all full. And I'll explain how that works later on. Now that we've finished moving a troll, we can now perform actions in that specific area. And once again, we moved to the mining cavern. So we're going to do actions in the mining cavern. Now we have one action point for every one of our trolls in that cavern, in addition to one for every human that we have in that cavern. Now each player board is subtly different than the rest. And for us, as part of setup, we began with two troll power, which I'll explain in more detail later, and one human. And we got to choose where the human went, and we decided to put that human over here. None of our opponents started with a human, but there are ways to trick them and lure them into our cave and I'll explain how that works later on. Now, in addition to getting one action point for every one of our trolls and the humans in that area, we also get an action point if the Troll King is there. So what that means is because we went here where the Troll King is, we are going to get one, two, three action points to spend. With that in mind, let's focus in a little bit more because this area right here shows us all of the action options for us in the mining cavern. Now, every one of these troll icons means one action that is spent. So what this means is we could spend all three of our action points in order to mine a single diamond from one of our resource spots. We did start with a diamond here at that resource location. So what that means is we don't have access to this diamond just yet, but again, we could spend all three of our action points to take this and then place it into our resource area where we could then use it for other actions later on. Now, I don't think that is what we want to do. Instead, I think we want to mine obsidian. Now, as you can see, that's going to take a single action. And by doing that, we can mine a single obsidian. It's worth noting it takes two action points to mine gold, but we can't even do that right now because we don't have any gold to mine. We started out with three obsidian and one diamond here on our player board. Now, again, I think we should mine obsidian, and that's going to take one of our three action points, so we will have two action points left over. Now, when we mine obsidian, we're going to take one obsidian from anywhere in our cave network, which does include these starting areas here. So let's mine this one obsidian and put it there into our resource area, and now we have two more actions left. I do want to point out that these are outposts that we can actually place onto the village board. And when we do that, we upgrade that action. So if we had placed this out for a single action, we could have mined up to two obsidian. And the same goes for all of these. Now, we haven't actually removed these just yet, and I'll explain how that works later on. For now, though, we have to spend one action for every single obsidian that we mine. Well, speaking of that, we have two action points left, and I think we want to mine another obsidian. So we'll take this and place it over there, which leaves us with a single action point left. And we could mine that last one if we wanted to, but I don't think we will. Now, I do want to point out that these resource locations will only refill when we do a resource refilling action. The icon for that looks like this, and I'll explain that in more detail later on. For now, though, there's only one obsidian and one diamond left in our cave network. So we have one action left, and if we wanted to, we could decide not to use it. That was perfectly fine, although not something you necessarily want to do. But I think instead of foregoing that action, let's activate one king tile. When we focus in, you can see a 1x here, and that means as part of this overall activation, we could only spend one action to activate a king tile. And again, that is what we're going to do. Now, at the start of the game, every player has a single king tile printed on their board, but we can gain more king tiles that will go into our cave network. And every time you activate this, you simply choose one king tile and do what it says. For us, we only have this option here, and that lets us move one of our trolls to any other cauldron on our player board or on the village board. 
Now this move does have to go from cauldron to cauldron, so we cannot move any of these unused trolls just yet. That means the only option for us is this troll here, and I think we want to move them up there to our building cavern. Now at this point, we've used all of our action points down here, and that means we finished our first activation of the turn, but on every player's turn, we are going to do two activations. As you can see, the game comes with a player aid, and that is described up at the top. Once again, we revealed a card and then did what it said. We moved the king. We then moved a troll and used actions, and now we're going to do that again. Now, the first five times you do this, you again take them from the side, but once they are all deployed, you move a troll from one place to another, and then again, you use actions where you move that troll to. Now, I think we want to move this troll here into our mining cavern. We already have another troll there because we moved it there as part of our previous activation. And after moving, we can now perform actions over here. And as you can see, we have two trolls, so we have two action points to spend. Now, looking over here, we could spend an action point to activate a king tile. This has one X, but that's just once per activation. We've already done that in our first activation, and now in our second activation, we could once again do this. And we could even activate the same king tile that we activated earlier on in this turn. Now, I don't think we want to do that. Instead, I think let's expand our cave network. This is going to take two actions as well as one obsidian. And fortunately, we dug out two obsidian earlier on. So we can use both of these actions and this obsidian, returning it to the supply. And that will let us add two cave tiles to our network. So let's focus down here. And as you can see, there are three different markets available in the game. These top tiles are cave tiles. These middle ones are king tiles. And the bottom here are troll cards. Now, I'll explain how we get troll cards and king tiles later on. For now, we're just looking at these cave tiles up here. And again, we are going to take two of these. But I do want to point out that you refresh these between activations. So if we had taken tiles in our first activation, we would have refilled this before we did the second activation on our turn. So let's focus in a little bit. Now, as you can see, the borders of these tiles are a little bit different, and that's because there are four different types of tiles that are available. We have resource tiles that have rocks around the outside. There are also bell tiles, which have bell icons. These right over here are princess tiles. They're fancy caves for captured princesses. And then the last type are victory point tiles. Now, victory point tiles give points to the player during final scoring, depending on a condition. This one right here says you gain one point for every cow that you have when the game is over. Right now, we don't have any cows, and I don't think it makes sense to go after any victory point tiles for the moment. Instead, I think we're going to take these two. Now we have to place both of these tiles down, and the very first tile that we place must go here, because that is essentially the entrance to our expandable cave network. Now we can put these down in any order of our choice, and I think we're gonna start with this tile. We're gonna place it like that, and as you can see, that has created a resource spot for gold. Now we are allowed to do something like this. These half resource spots don't have to match, but what does have to match is openings. So as you can see, this works, whereas with these victory point tiles, they have only one opening, so that would be illegal, whereas that is a legal placement. So again, I could do something like this, but if we can match, I do think we should. Now, as soon as we match that up, we will now have that gold mining spot for the rest of the game, but we won't actually put a gold resource on there until we do a gold refill action. I'll talk about that later on, and now we can place this tile. Now, it must go adjacent to any previously placed tiles, and I think it makes sense to put it like this. As you can see, we have created yet another spot for a gold bar. In addition to that, this tile that we just placed has two obsidian spots. Now the spots that are within the tile immediately fill up as soon as you place it. Once again, you do not automatically refill the resource spots that are between the two tiles. So we've added two obsidian spots, which means we have five possible locations to get obsidian, and we went from zero to two spots where we can now mine gold. In addition to that, these tiles gave us other benefits. This one right here has a green circle, and that means we can take a bell from the board and place it here, and when we do, we'll gain one gold and we'll gain one troll power. Over there, that has the outpost shape, and that means we can place an outpost on here and then perform the action underneath that. Now, those are two different actions that I haven't described just yet, and don't worry, I'll get to those soon. One thing that we do have to do immediately, though, is construct a barn. When we focus in a little bit, that is a barn icon, and as soon as we place this tile, that's going to construct a barn for us, and the barn location is in the bottom middle part of our player board. As you can see, we start the game with a single farm, and then three under construction farms. So we can just remove this, and that means we now have two farms, and each farm can hold at most one cow. So that means we can now hold two cows. We don't have any just yet, but it is nice having extra options for that. 
cows are an important resource that I'm sure I'll talk about soon. Well, at this point, we finished placing both of those cave tiles, and that used up all of the action points that we currently have, so we are now done with this activation. Before we move on, I do want to point out that we could have spent one of our action points to reset the cave tile market. When you do this, you discard all of the tiles currently in the market, and then you deal five or more out. So you can spend an action point to see a different variety if you're looking for something that isn't currently out there. Now, we've already talked about this action option. The last one we haven't over here is this one, which lets us place new outposts. And again, I think I'll talk about that a little more in the future. As you can see, that takes three action points and you have to spend a cow. Well, that activation is over, so now we can refill the markets. The cave tile market is going to need two more tiles. And at this point, our turn is coming to a close. The final thing we always do is draw the top card from this stack, and then we can consider the implications of that card as our opponents are taking their turn. For example, we can see that next turn, the king is going to be over here in the troll power section. So if we do actions over there, we'll get one extra action point. And we could, of course, decide to do other things, but the fact that there's extra action points down there is definitely something that we want to factor in. This card is also going to place a princess out on the board, and I'll describe how that works later on. With our turn done, play can now move clockwise up to the yellow player. And of course, they already had this card in their hand, so now they can reveal it. And as you can see, that is going to place a princess into the town in location 4. And then the king is actually going to move to the town that's indicated there. Town 4 is down here, and the princesses go into the tower. Now, there is only ever going to be one princess in each town. So if you go to add another princess, you simply don't do that, whereas the other tokens can accumulate. Then, of course, the king will go into this town, and they will stay there, adding one action point for all activations in that area during the yellow player's turn. Now it's time for yellow to do their first troll move, and they don't have to go over here just because the king is here, but the fact that the king is here does mean there's an extra action point, and they've decided to do that. Now they can go onto one of these cauldron spots, and I do want to point out that if all of these were filled up, they would still be able to come over here as long as one of these cauldrons had an opponent's troll. In that case, they would actually kick out the opponent's troll, they'd place their troll down, and that opponent would place the troll that was kicked out onto any cauldron spot on their player board. Now yellow can do actions, and as you can see, they have one action point from their troll, as well as one action point from the troll king. So they have two action points available over here. Now in order to figure out what they're going to do on their turn, they have to look at their player aid. This lists the six different options that you can choose while performing actions on the village board, and the top three are a little bit different than the other icons. As you can see, that shows a yellow troll and then a gray troll. The gray troll icon means any troll color. So that means for these top three options, the player can actually use trolls in that village of opposing players' colors. The bottom three do have to just be yellow or the troll king, or you can also gain troll power for your outposts that are already placed over here. Again, I haven't actually explained how that works just yet, so we'll go into that later. Now, as you can see, they have two troll power, and realistically, that means they're looking at these options down here. Now, they could get two cows, hypothetically. They can spend one action to gain a cow twice, although cows have to be stored in those barns, and the yellow player only has one barn, so they could only store one cow. Another option available to them, though, is this one. That lets them trick a human and lure them back into their cave. That takes a gold, one troll power, and two actions. And again, they do have two actions, and they've decided that's what they're going to do. In order to do this, there does have to be a human in that village area, and there is. So they'll take this one here. And then, of course, they do have to pay one gold, but they started with four gold, so they can easily afford that, and one troll power, and they started with one troll power, as you can see on this track. So they'll slide the token from the one spot to zero, and now they have this human, and they'll have them for the rest of the game. They can place them down onto any open cauldron spot on their player board. It's important to note, humans can never go back out onto the village board. Now, once they place a human, they cannot move that human until they activate an action that specifically lets them do that. And the icon to move humans looks like this. After considering their options, they do want to place the human down over here into their troll power cavern. Well, that's used up all of their action points for that activation, so now they can move another troll and do this again. And if they wanted to, they could head back over here where they then have three troll power available to them. If they did that, they could activate a new option. That looks like this. This can use troll activations from their own trolls or their opponents, and that would let them activate the town action in that village area, but then it would also cause them to return all of their trolls. 
Every single town got a town action randomly placed on it at the start of the game, and it will stay there for the entire game. The town action over here would gain them two troll power. So if they did that, they could get the two troll power, and then these trolls would return to their board, and they could place them down onto any empty cauldrons on their player board. Now, I don't think that is what they actually want to do. Instead, they want to head over here to their troll power cavern. When we focus in, they do have a human there now after their first activation, so we can see they have two action points, and in this area, they are going to activate that top option. This lets them gain two troll power. That's pretty simply done. They just slide their marker up two spaces, and they are capped out at five power at the moment. Now, I do want to point out these changeling tokens. There are ways to remove these, and as you can see, as you remove them from here, you gain more troll power for those two action points, and you can also remove this one in order to increase the maximum amount of troll power that you can hold. Now, I'll explain how we actually remove these changelings later on in the tutorial. For now, though, yellow is done with that second activation. So they can finish their turn by drawing their top card, looking at it, and now the next player can go. Going clockwise, that is going to be the teal player down here. The first card they have is now revealed, and that says they're going to add a human baby onto Village 1, and then the Troll King is going to move to their Troll Power Cavern. That cavern is right down here, and then Village 1 will gain another human baby. Now they can do their first activation, moving a troll, and they are going to head down here to their troll power cavern. As you can see, they have two action points, one from their troll and one from the troll king. Now they can perform actions, and they've decided they want to gain a troll card. As you can see, this will take one action out of the two they currently have. It'll also take one troll power, and they started with one, so they can go down to zero, and it will take one cow. Now the teal player actually starts with a cow, and they start with a second built barn, compared to the rest of us who only have one barn. So they'll spend the cow, they've already spent the power and the action, and now they can gain a troll card. Troll cards are over here, and as you can see, there are five available. Now they can take any one of these, and they've decided to go with this one, and they won't refill this until they finish this activation. If they had more troll power and more cows, they could potentially use more actions to buy more cards right now. It looks like that's not going to happen, though. Now, they do have to place this troll card into their area, and they're going to have this for the rest of the game. Now, troll cards do a couple of things. One thing they do is give an icon at the top. Now, that is going to be a frog, a bat, or a snake. And by themselves, these don't do anything, but there are many things in the game that give you end game victory points based off of these icons on the cards that you have. Another thing to point out is that every card comes with a square spot on it, and this is where you put human babies after you swap them out for a troll changeling. Again, I'll talk about that soon, but having this is nice. And then the bottom of the cards offer a variety of different effects. This is an endgame scoring effect that says the teal player is going to gain an extra victory point at the end of the game for every single bell-type cave tile they've added into their cave network. Of the cards available to them, they had some other options. They could have taken this one, which would have given them one point at the end of the game for every pair of gold resource spots they have in their cave network. And then these two aren't actually end game actions. They happen immediately. This one lets you immediately refresh the troll card market as well as the cave tile market, whereas this one lets you immediately refill one resource type in your cave network. Lastly, this one that we currently see gives you one point at the end of the game for every four cave tiles that you have in your cave network. So they have a new goal of trying to get more of those bell tiles, and now they do still have one action point left. Now they could spend one in order to refresh that card market. If you do this, you discard all of the cards and then deal five more out. I don't think that's what they want to do though. Instead, they're gonna go for this bottom option, and once again, this lets them activate a single king tile, and for them, they still just have this one here in the middle, which lets them move one troll. That troll has to go from one cauldron to another, and they've decided to move from this cauldron to that one out there on village number one. After that, they finish their first move activation so they can refresh this market with a new troll card. This one has a spot for a changeling as well as a spot for a bell. Now they can do their second troll move activation and they're gonna head out to this village where they just move that other troll. After placing, it looks like they have two action points, and they're going to go pretty simple over here. They're just going to take two cows. Each cow takes one action point, and again, they have two, so they can grab two cows from the supply and then place those into their barns. Once again, the teal player got to start with an extra barn, so they have spots to hold both of those cows. All right, teal can finish their turn by drawing the top card from their deck, and now it's time for us to go again. The first thing we do is reveal this card to everyone, and that is going to put a princess into the tower in village number two. Village two is there, so we can add the princess. 
And then it looks like the Troll King is going to head into our Troll Power Cavern. All right, now it's time for us to do our first troll move activation. We will place a troll from the side. Now, I think what I want to do is send this troll out to get us a cow. I would like to build an outpost with our second activation, and that requires a cow. And the way we get cows is by going out here to the villages. Now, I think we're going to go to this village up here. And then with that one action, we will gain a single cow. So a pretty simple first activation for us, but I think it's going to be worth it. Now we can do our second troll move activation, and it's going to be this one being placed over there. Once we do that, we have three trolls in our building cavern, and that is what we need to build an outpost. We also need a cow, and we have a cow, so we can return that to the supply, and now do the first outpost construction of the game. Now the way this works is we have to remove one of the four outposts that are on our player board. If we remove any of these, then that will increase the efficiency at which we mine those specific types of things from our cave network. And we also have this over here. If we remove that, we simply immediately gain two troll power once. We don't desperately need troll power right now though, so I don't think that makes sense. And we have quite a bit of obsidian we could still potentially mine. So I think let's build this outpost here. So in the future, when we go down here, we can spend a single action to mine two obsidian from our network. Now what we have to do is replace one of these neutral outposts on the board with our outpost. We can take any of these, and I think we'll take this one. And it's important to note that our outposts give us one action when we move to that village. So what this means is for the rest of the game, we have a permanent plus one action point when we go to village number two, and that is shown right over here on our player aid. Finally, we have to place this neutral outpost onto an outpost location in our player area, which includes all of the tiles that we've placed, as well as our main player board. Now, in the top left corner, we have three open spots, one for an outpost, one for a bell, and one for a human baby. And these are available to us, but there are no icons under them, so we don't get anything when we cover them. So if possible, it's better to put these down onto other options, and we do have one over here on that tile we took. As you can see, that is the refill resources symbol. And as soon as we put this down, we immediately get to do that action. Now, this outpost is going to stay there for the rest of the game. There's no way to remove it. And we do potentially get points at the end of the game for these outposts. And I'll explain that later on in the tutorial. For now, though, let's do a refill resource action. The way this works is simple. We select one resource type, either obsidian, gold bars, or diamonds, and we refill all of that resource type within our overall cave. So right now we could choose obsidian and fill these two spots in, or we could choose gold bars and fill those two spots in. I think that might actually be a better call for us. Yeah, let's take two gold bars from the supply and put them right here. And now we can potentially mine those in the future. In fact, now that I think about this, I'm going to change my decision. And let's say we built the outpost for gold mining, not for obsidian. This way in the future, we can, for two actions, mine both of these gold bars. It's still pretty efficient to get the obsidian at a one-to-one -one rate. So now we've made the gold bars a one-to-one -one ratio as well. And yeah, we'll stick with this change. Well, that's finished our second activation, so our turn is ending. We can draw the top card, and that means on our next turn, we won't actually place anything down onto the village boards, and the Troll King is going to move over here into our mining cavern. All right, play moves over to yellow, and they can reveal their card. It looks like a human is going to be placed into village one. Village one is up here. And then the Troll King is also going to be placed into village one. Now Yellow can do their first troll move, and they've decided to go to Village 1. It's getting pretty popular. Once here, it looks like they have two troll power, although there are two teal trolls there. That means collectively there is four troll power for the actions where you can use opponent's trolls. Now that does involve the town action. So technically they could use these three action points to activate the town action, and that would let them refill one resource type, but that's not what they're looking to do. We can see in order to destroy a bell, that's going to take four actions, and those can be opposing trolls. So they could do the four here. However, that also requires three obsidian, and they don't currently have any obsidian. So instead of that, they are actually going to go down here and do a changeling action. This takes two action points of their specific color. And again, they have two, one from their troll and one from the troll king. And what this means is they can actually swap a human baby out in the town with a troll baby. Now we do this using troll magic. As you can see, that's going to take two troll magic, and then they have to spend either a diamond or two gold bars. 
They still have three gold bars left, so they're going to spend these two, and then they have two troll power, so they'll spend that, bringing them down to zero. Now this human baby is going to join them in their cave, and the only spot they have for this is up here. The human babies go onto the square locations, so they can go there. They don't get any immediate benefit because there is no icon there, and what this means is now they can't actually gain any other human babies until they get a square spot to place them down onto, and again, those primarily come from these troll cards. Now Yellow has to remove one of their four changelings and put it back into the village, essentially swapping it out for that baby. Now, if they remove this, they'll increase the maximum amount of troll power they can store at any point in time. If they remove from here, they would make three troll power for two actions over here instead of just two. And the other option is over here. If they remove that changeling, they'll immediately gain a cow once. Now that is actually what they're going to do, even though it's a one-time effect, whereas the other ones have ongoing benefits. And the reason for that is because they really want a cow for their second activation. Now they can place their changeling over here in the village, and the humans are none the wiser. Well, Yellow's used all of their actions over here, so the first activation is done. And for their second activation, they'll move this troll down into their troll power section. Now they have three action points to spend, and they'll start with two action points, getting them troll power. That gets them two, which brings them up to two. And then with their last action point, they are going to gain a troll card. Remember, they don't have any more spots to hold those babies, and getting a card will give them one of those spots. This will use that action point, as well as the cow that they really needed, and it'll use up one of the two troll power they just gained. Now they can take a troll card, and they've decided to go with this one here. It has a spot for a baby as well as a spot for a bell. It does not have an immediate effect, but they still like having these options. So the card will go over there, and that has finished their activation. So they can finish their turn by drawing the top card from their deck, and then replenish the troll card row. Ah, this one gives you one obsidian when you cover that up with a human baby, and as soon as you take the card, you can immediately do two troll movements with them going from one cauldron to another. All right, it's time for Teal to go, and they can begin by revealing their card. It looks like a human is going to show up in Village 1. So there's a whole bunch of them over there now. And then the Troll King is going to go to their Builder's Cavern. After that, it's time for them to move a troll. This one is going to be placed somewhere, and they've decided to go to the Builder's Cavern. That is going to give them two action points, and they're going to add two cave tiles. That uses both of their action points, and they have to spend one of their obsidian. And after that, they can take two of these cave tiles. Now, they're definitely going to take this bell tile. Remember, they get an extra victory point at the end of the game for every bell cave tile they have. So that's effectively plus one point. Now, they can put this down, and they'll place it like this. And that does come with a barn, which means they have three barns now, very close to their maximum of four. After that, they get to take one more tile, and they've decided to go with this resource tile here. And they could put it in any of these five spots, but we're not surprised to see them put it like this so that it matches up into a diamond resource location. This, of course, starts with two obsidian on it. And that's finished their first activation, and they've used all of their action points. This means the troll tiles can be refreshed. Ah, that's a bell tile, and you actually get a human from the supply when you put a bell on that spot. This is another victory point tile that gets you one point at the end of the game for every diamond that you still have. Teal's first activation is done, so now they can do their second troll move, and they'll put this troll here. That's once again in their Builder's Cavern. They now have three action points, and they're going to do this top option to build their own outpost. That is going to take all three actions, and it'll take one of the cows that they have. Now they can remove an outpost, and considering the amount of obsidian they currently have, they've decided to remove the outpost associated with mining that easier. Now they can put this outpost on the board, and they'll go here. And now they can place this onto one of two spots in their area. This would give them nothing, whereas that would give them a bonus of letting them refill a resource type. And they've decided to go for that, and they're going to select diamonds. They only get to put one down, but still, having a diamond is necessary in order to capture a princess. And it looks like they're thinking long term here. So they can put a diamond over here, and of course it will take three actions in order to mine that diamond so that they can use it. Alright, that's finished the teal player's turn, so they can now draw the top card from their deck. And it's once again time for us to go. Now, before we move on, I'd like to talk about how the game actually ends. As you've noticed, we've been drawing one card from the top of this deck at the end of every turn and then revealing it. And these are the game timer. In a three player game, there are 11 cards with five of these day cards, five twilight cards, and then one night card there at the bottom. In a four player game, you play 10 rounds. And in a two player game, you play 12 rounds. 
Once everyone has gone through their entire deck, that is when the game will end, and then we'll move into final scoring. Now, I'll talk about how final scoring works in more detail later on. For now, though, we have to reveal this card to our opponents. Obviously, we don't add anything down, and then the Troll King will move into our Mining Cavern. That is right over here. And now we can move a troll, and this is our last troll from the side. Uh, I think let's put them over here in the mining cavern, and we now have three mining actions. Let's use two of those to mine gold. Because we built that outpost, we can get two gold for those two actions, and we have two gold available. So we can move these over here, and we have one action left. With it, we could move a troll, or we could just mine another obsidian, which is not a bad idea. Yeah, I think let's just mine the obsidian. All right, that's all three of these actions, and now we can do our second activation, and for the first time in the game, all of our trolls are out. What this means is from this point on, we will always move a troll from their cauldron to where we want it to go on each one of these activations. Now, I think we want to head over here for our second activation, and I think let's move this troll to do it. Uh, that does mean we have less trolls over here for action points in the building area, but having two there is still fine, I think. So we'll move this one over here, and then I think let's trick a human and lure them back into our cave. That is going to take two of our action points, and we have three because, of course, this outpost gives us one action point. So we'll spend two of those plus a troll power and a gold, and then take this human. We, of course, have to spend a troll power and a gold, and then I think we'll put the human down here. We could put it there to have even more for mining, but I think spreading these out for the moment is maybe a better call for us. That used two out of our three action points, and with a third action point, let's just take a cow. Cows are great to have so that we can build more outposts, as well as take some of those troll cards, which we haven't actually done up to this point. Well, at this point, we've finished both of our activations, so that's finished our turn. We can draw this card for our next turn. It looks like the Troll King's going to head up to our building cavern. This means it's time for Yellow to go. They will add nothing to the board, and then the Troll King is going to go to their builder cavern. For their first activation, they're going to send this troll out to Village 2. Now, they only have one action power over here. However, they've decided to activate the Village Power. Now, for that, they can use other people's trolls. So in this case, that means they actually have three troll power to use for that action, and that action will get them one obsidian from the supply and one cow. So they've effectively gotten a lot by utilizing our trolls as well as theirs. Now, the other effect of this says they have to remove all of their trolls from that village, and they can place them down onto any cauldrons of their choice on their player board. So, they can remove this troll, and then, of course, take a cow and an obsidian. And they've decided to put this troll over here into their mining cavern. That's used their first activation, and with their second activation, they have to move a troll. And they've decided to head up here. Now, the Troll King is in their building cavern. So that means they have two action points. It's true they could have sent this previous troll over here to have three action points, but they figure with that third action point, they were probably just going to be moving that troll anyway. So that's why they didn't. Now with these two action points, as well as this obsidian they just got, they're going to add two cave tiles to their player area. They've decided to go with these two here, and they'll place this one first, matching up, creating a gold bar spot for themselves. And then they'll put this one over there, making a diamond spot for themselves. Now, this is a location they could place a bell to gain a human, which is pretty great. And immediately after constructing this tile, they're going to build their second farm. Now, this tile comes into play with a couple of obsidian on it. And that's finished their activation. So they can end their turn by drawing the top card from their deck. And then, of course, this market needs to be refilled. It looks like, oh, a couple of bell tiles came out. And now it's time for Teal to go. They can reveal their card, and it looks like nothing is added to the board except for the Troll King, who's going to go to village number two. That is right over here. Now Teal can do a movement, and they are going to head here to their Builder Cavern. And while they do have three action points and a cow, so they could make an outpost, they've decided they're going to add more cave tiles. This is going to take their one obsidian and two out of their three action points. And with these, they're going to take both of these new tiles that just showed up. They are each of the bell type. And remember, Teal is going to gain an extra point at the end of the game for each of the bell tiles they have. Now they can add these tiles, and they'll put this one here. And that immediately makes them a new barn. And that's actually their final barn, so they could hold up to four cows. And then they'll place this one out. And they would like to match up with the symbol. Yeah, they're going to go for it. That is going to give them a third spot where they can place gold bars. 
that also would give them another barn, except they were already maxed out on that. Now, that's great for them because of this card, but that's also great for them because they have just completed one of the king's challenges. These are represented with these king cards up here, and during setup, we dealt out two red cards, one blue and one yellow. Now, these are going to be different each time you play the game, and as soon as you meet the criteria that's shown on a card, you can immediately gain a king tile. Each player can do this up to once for each one of these cards, and as you can see, this one says as soon as you have three bell tiles, you can place that king tile down into your cave. This one involves having three outposts built, that one involves having three human babies in your area, and finally this one involves having one each of the frog, bat, and snake icons on the troll cards that you've taken. Now again, this doesn't take any actions, so the teal player is going to activate this now. And then they would put a clan token on top of this to show that they can't do this again, but this prototype did not have it. I don't think that's going to be a problem for this tutorial, though. So, the teal player now gets to place the first king tile of the game. These are over here in their own market. Now, if you remember, there are ways to actually activate a single king tile in your area, and these add new king tile options. These three over here are an action that you can do. Uh, this one lets you move one of your trolls, and you can move one of your humans. That one lets you simply take a tile from the cave market and place it into your cave. And finally, this one lets you gather up to two gold bars from your cave and put them into your resource area. Now, while these are activatable, these other ones are ongoing. This simply gives you three resource spots to hold gold bars, and this one gives you two spots to put bells that you've destroyed, and when you put it down, you get one of each resource, which is very powerful. Out of all these options, it looks like Teal has decided to go with this one, and that only has one half resource and is a gold bar. They don't have any half gold bars to match this up with, though, so they are just going to put it over here so that they can maybe start expanding in that direction. Now, you may have noticed there's a strange sliver right here, and that's because these are pentagons, so they will not make a perfectly tight network. Instead, there are going to be forks and gaps that you have to deal with. Well, at this point, Teal has used two out of their three action points, and with their last action point, they are going to activate one of their king tiles. Remember, up to this point, we've only activated the one on our board because that's all that we had, but now Teal has two different options. So that means they could either move one of their trolls, or they could gain a cave tile, and that is the one they've decided to activate. Now again, you can only do this once per activation, so that's good to keep in mind, and now they can take one of those cave tiles. Currently, they only have three options available because, again, these will refresh at the end of the activation, and they've decided to take this tile here. That is going to give them one victory point at the end of the game for every cow that they have, and considering they have four barns, that means they could hold up to four cows, and they might try to actually do that by the time the game ends to get extra points from this. Now, as I mentioned before, these victory point tiles have only one entry that has to match up with an entry from another tile, and they've decided to go like this so that that makes another diamond spot for them. It is important to note that by doing that, they've blocked off the possibility of placing over there and matching up that half obsidian spot. They're still happy with this, though, and they've now finished all their action points for this first activation. Now they can reset the markets, so we need three more cave tiles. This one gives you one point at the end of the game for every snake icon on your troll cards, and that is similar, but for the frogs. And then we need a new king tile, and oh, this one, when you activate it, lets you take a troll card. Now Teal has another activation to go, and they have to move a troll. They're going to move one of these three over to village one, and it looks like they have four action points here, and yellow is there as well. Now, they're going to start by spending two of their action points to take cows. Each action point gets them a cow, so they can take these and put them down into their barns. And then with their other two activations, they will add in the yellow troll, and then they're going to activate the actual town action. For this town, that will let them refill one of their resource types, and then, importantly, they have to remove all of their trolls from this area and then place them onto cauldrons on their player board. Interestingly enough, they've decided to send all three of these into their mining area, and then the action lets them refill one type of resource, and they're going to go for gold bars. They have three of those spots available, so they can add all three of those down into their cave. All right, that's going to finish up Teal's turn. They can draw a card, and now we can go. As you can see, we're going to add a human onto Village 4, and then the Troll King is going to go into our building cavern. So a human will head down here. Now for our turn, I think what we want to do is set ourselves up to be able to capture a princess on our next turn. 
In order to do that, we need a couple of things. The first is a diamond. It's going to take a diamond, two troll power, and five action points in order to capture that princess. And you'll notice when you do that, you also gain a king tile. These can be very powerful, as we've already seen with the teal player. So I think let's start things off by getting that diamond. Let's move this troll down here. We now have three action points, and that is enough to mine that diamond. So let's go ahead and do that. That was our entire first activation, which doesn't seem like a lot, but we need that diamond, so I think this is our plan. Then for our second activation, we need to build a warm, cozy spot in our cave for that princess. So let's head back up here. We now have three actions, and let's spend two of those along with an obsidian to add two more tiles. It is true we could spend an action to cycle the cave tile row, although I think I am okay with these options. Now this is a spot where we can put a captured princess, and then for the next tile, I am tempted to take this. That would get us an extra point at the end of the game for every diamond that we have, but I think it's probably better to lean into a little bit more infrastructure for the time being. So let's take this tile, and then we can place these tiles down, and I think we're gonna put this one here, and that one will go like that. We've just created a diamond spot as well as another gold spot. After that, we have one action left, and I think we're gonna activate our only king tile, and let's move a troll. In particular, we'll move this one over here to village two. That is going to be where we're gonna to try to capture a princess in the next round, and I think that's gonna help us out with that. Well, that's finished our activation, so we can now refill this market in. There's another princess tile, actually two of them. And then we can finish by drawing the top card from our deck. All right, yellow can take their turn, so they'll start by revealing their card. Nothing is going to be placed out onto the board, and then it looks like the Troll King is going to go to their mining cavern. After that, they've decided to move this troll away from the village, and they're going to send it to the mining cavern. And then they'll have three action points to spend here. Uh, this is going to be pretty straightforward for them. They are just going to mine three obsidian, one action point at a time. That's finished their first troll move and activation, and for their second one, they're going to move this troll over to Village 2. Once here, they've decided to destroy the first bell of the game. Trolls hate the sound of those church bells, so when possible, they destroy them. Now, this is going to take three obsidian and four troll actions, but they can use their opponent's trolls for this. As you can see, they have one troll, but then we have three, so they're actually utilizing our trolls to get to the four actions they need. And then, of course, they just got these three obsidians, so they can spend those. Now they can take one bell from this area, and it doesn't matter which one it is. New bells are never added onto the board, though. So they'll take this one here, and then they can place it here, which would get them no benefit, or here, which would get them two troll power immediately, or here, and that would get them one human. That is the best option, they think, so they're going to go right here. And, of course, as soon as that's covered... They will gain a human, and they're going to put it into this cauldron here in their building cavern. Well, that's finished Yellow's second troll move and activation, so they can finish their turn by drawing the top card from their deck. As you can see, that was their final day card. After that, they'll move into Twilight. All right, it's time for Teal to go, and they can reveal their card. Now that's going to place a princess into Village 1 if possible, and then the Troll King is going to move into their mining cavern. Before we move on, we do have to add that princess to Village 1. Now they can move their first troll, and the plan they had for this turn was to move trolls down here and then get a whole bunch of materials, specifically maybe a diamond and some obsidian. That's why they moved all three of these over here when they came back after activating a village action on their last turn. That being said, it looks like the teal player has changed their mind about their plan, though. They're wishing they'd maybe place these trolls differently, but they're just going to stick with this, and they're going to move this troll up here. Now, once they arrive on this spot, they're going to build their second outpost. That will take three actions, which they have, and one cow, which they certainly have. And then they've decided to construct this outpost here. Now, that immediately gains them two power once, but they really did want that power. Uh, they could have removed one of these, but they think they'll get to that at some point in the future. Now they can place this outpost down, and they can swap it for any one of these neutral outposts. And after thinking about it, they're going to go here. They'll put both of these into Village 1. 
Now they have to put this neutral outpost down. And unfortunately, they don't have any spots over here to put it. They have a whole bunch of spots for bells, but they have not actually destroyed any of those yet. Fortunately, they do have one spot up here. So now they have no more outpost locations. So if they want to upgrade again, they will need to find another spot to actually put a neutral outpost onto. They're still fine with this. They think this is a good plan. And now they can move into their second troll move and activation. And they've decided to move this troll over here to village one. Over here, they have one, two, three action points, and they've decided they want to swap a human baby for a changeling. That's going to take two action points, which they have, as well as two troll power and a diamond or two gold. So they can spend the two power they just got for constructing that outpost. They can also spend these two gold, and then they're going to put this human baby onto that spot on their troll card. That covered up a single troll power spot, so they'll gain one troll power back. And now they can remove one of their changelings, and they'll remove this one. That means in the future, if they spend two actions to make troll power down here, they will make three troll power instead of two. This can, of course, be upgraded again by moving this changeling out later on in the game. So they can put this changeling over here, and it looks like Village 1 doesn't have any human babies left. They're all baby trolls. Well, that's finished the teal player's turn, so they can draw one card. And now we can go. We can reveal our card, and that's going to put a human down into village two. That is over here, and it looks like the troll king is also going to go to village two. All right, it's time for us to move a troll, and as I said on our last turn, the goal for us is to try and capture this princess. In order to do that, we need five actions that can be split over our opponent's trolls. We also need a diamond and two troll power but it looks like we currently only have one troll power. So I think that needs to be our priority to start our turn. So let's move a troll, and I think we'll move this one over. Now we have two actions over here with the help of this human, and let's activate this. That will get us two troll power, which brings us to three, and that's finished our first move and activation. Now we can do our second move and activation, and I think we're gonna move this troll over to village two, which seems to be where pretty much all of us are. Now they're actually gonna take up the final cauldron spot over there. And now let's capture that princess. Now, once again, this takes five actions, but we can use opposing trolls to do this. Looking over here, there is a yellow troll. So I think let's make use of that. Uh, we also have one outpost, four of our own trolls and the troll king. So this is a pretty popular spot right now. To get to those five actions, I think we'll go one, two, three, four, five. And that means we'll have two actions left over after this. Now we can capture the princess. Although in order to do that, we of course have to spend this diamond as well as two of our troll power. Now the princess must go down into a cozy warm bed that's over here in our play area. And now we get to gain a king tile. Now these are from the same set of tiles that we get when we complete those king challenge cards which means we can take any of these. Now, currently we haven't taken a single troll card this game so far, so I think this is the one to grab. We can now activate this in the future to gain a troll card, and I think that's gonna be great for us. It is true, these are pretty nice as well, having a bunch of gold spots to take gold from, or these to put bells down onto to get diamonds in particular as well as everything else, but again, I think this is what we wanna actually go for. It looks like this has a gold half symbol, and we don't have any of those currently showing. So I think we're just gonna put this over here. Well, we've successfully captured the princess, and we do still have two action points left over from this troll and from the troll king. Now with those, I think let's trick another human. Once again, that takes two actions, which we have, and then we have to spend one gold and one troll power, and we have those as well. There, of course, does have to be a human in this section, and it looks like there is. So we can spend the one troll power and this one gold bar, and then place this human down into our area. We could go over here and just keep things nice and spread out so that we have good options for all of these, or we could double down a bit and do something like this so that we could easily get troll power when we need it. We do already have this here, though. I think, yeah, with our current situation, it makes the most sense to spread these out. Well, at this point, we've used all of our action points, so a pretty large activation has come to an end, and now we can finish our turn by drawing the top card from this deck. As you can see, this is the first of the Twilight cards, and on the backside, it looks just the same as the Day cards that we already saw. They were just split into those two types in order to get a good distribution of these icons. So that means at the start of our next turn, a Princess will go down into Village 4 if possible, and the Troll King will go down into our Troll Power Cavern. 
Well, at this point, it would be time for the yellow player to go, but I think I'm now going to stop playing through the game for the tutorial and instead talk about what happens once the game is over. Again, the game will come to a close once everyone has gone through every single one of their cards in a three-player game that is going to be 11 full rounds. At that point, we will then move into final scoring, and on the back of our player aids, it details all of the points that we get. Now, we start off by getting points for having sets of different babies, bells, and outposts that are out. As you can see, if you have all three of those, that is 15 points for that set of three. If you have another set of two different ones, that's nine points, and a single one of these is worth four points. So it does make sense to pay attention and stay varied as you take these, because the more varied you are, the more points you get for those tokens. Now, the next thing we get points for are the princesses. They each give seven points, and every king tile gives three points. That means effectively, when you capture a princess, you get 10 points, seven plus three, because both of those come into your area. Of course, you can also gain these king tiles by completing the king challenges up at the top. Now, in addition to that, we're going to gain one point for every one of the humans that are currently in our area. The yellow player has a couple, we have three, and Teal hasn't actually gained any so far in this game. So they're good to have for points, and of course, because they give us more actions when we visit those caverns. After that, we're going to score a variable number of points for the blue cave tiles that we have, as well as for some of the troll cards that we've picked up. Remember, these have conditions on them, like this one giving points for cows, or this one giving points for having bell cave tiles. There's a wide variety of each of these, and players can pick both of them up as we play through the game and score them during final scoring. Once everyone has added all of this up, the player with the most points will be the winner. Well, at this point, I do believe I've taught just about all of the rules to the game, so that's going to bring this tutorial to a close. I hope you enjoyed learning how to play Trolls and Princesses. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.